Hi, it's Terry here at Hyperion Hot Tubs and in this video we're going to look at an air source heat pump. What one is, how it works and why you might want one. So first of all, let's just look at the heater that's already built into your spa. Now there's a good chance it's going to look a lot like this one. And this is what's known as a resistance heater. So if we look down inside, you can see a heating element, much like what you'd find at the bottom of your kettle. So what happens is we've got electricity flowing in through here, through the element and back out. Now that element resists the flow of electricity. So because it's resisting the flow, it's generating heat. How much heat? Well, we can see here that this is a three kilowatt unit. So for three kilowatts of electricity going in, we're getting three kilowatts of heat out. Now, another way of looking at that is a ratio. So you could say that for every one kilowatt going in, we've got a kilowatt of heat coming out. That's a one to one ratio, or in heat pump terminology, we'd say that's a coefficient of performance, a COP of one. So when you're looking at heat pumps, you can compare their efficiency by looking at the COP figure. So this heating element has got a COP of one. Now, we don't actually want to remove this from your spa. And the reason for that is if you just look in the end there, that is a sensor. And we've got another one on the other end of the heater. And that's providing important information to the control system of your spa. So we don't want to do without that information. So we actually leave this in place. We're just going to disconnect it and control it through other means. So now looking at the heat pump, you can see on this end, we have a fan and around the other side, something that looks like a radiator. Now, when we're talking heat pumps, we actually call that an evaporator. And inside that tubing is something called a refrigerant. So what's happening is the ambient air is getting sucked in by that fan, passing over the evaporator and getting blown out the other side. Now there's actually energy within the air, even at minus temperatures. So even at minus 100, there's still energy within the air. And that energy is something that we can actually capture. So as the air passes over that evaporator, the heat within the air itself actually gets transferred into the refrigerant in that pipework. And that refrigerant then passes through in something called a compressor where it gets squished and that compression actually increases the heat even more. It then passes up into something called a heat exchanger. Now what's happening there is we would add on some additional pipework from your hot tub that would go into the bottom and then out the top. And whilst that water's inside the heat pump, it's passing through the heat exchanger where it passes very closely. It doesn't touch, but it passes very closely with the refrigerant and the heat gets exchanged into the water of the spa. And the last step in the journey for that refrigerant is from the heat exchanger. It now goes into something called an expansion valve where it gets the pressure reduced and it's allowed to travel back through into the evaporator at a much cooler temperature and it's now ready to um, soak up more heat. And that cycle is just constantly going all the time. Now, why do you want an air source heat pump? Well, if you look back at the standard heater that had a coefficient of performance of one. For every one unit of energy in, we've got one unit out. This air source heat pump on a nice warm day like today has got a coefficient of performance of five. For every unit of energy in, we've got five out. So it's much, much more efficient than the heater built into the spa. And like I said before, it also will do that even at minus temperatures. So the hotter the air, the more impressive the figures will be. And at cooler temperatures, then those figures will be reduced. But even in minus temperatures, it will still be much more efficient than the heater built into the spa. Another cool feature of this particular unit is it will actually chill the water as well. So on a nice sunny day, if the water is too hot for you and you're wanting something to actually cool off in, then the only option really is just to open up the cover, 
turn the temperature down on the spa and wait for it to cool down. And that could take a while if you've got a really energy efficient spa. But with this unit, we can actually reverse the cycle and it will actually work to cool the water down actively, which is a pretty special feature. And you can actually do that via a um, inbuilt app as well. So you can control this unit from your phone. Now, if you've got a swim spa, you don't need to miss out because we actually do units for those as well. This particular unit has got a five kilowatt output. We also do seven kilowatt. And then for swim spas, we've got units that are seven, nine, 12 and upwards. So we've really got something for every spa out there. So if you're looking to save money on your energy bills, then please get in contact.